most people who know GLSEN probably are most aware of our uh, youth development and um, student organizing efforts, our connections with uh, more than 4,000 Gay Straight Alliance student clubs around the country, our Jumpstart Student Leadership Program currently being implemented in 12 states, including Arizona, Nebraska, and Maine, um, and our sponsorship of uh, public education and youth advocacy activities like the Day of Silence. Today I'm actually going to focus on a very different aspect of what GLSEN does and a fundamental aspect of our strategy from our founding that I think has been particularly important to gains that have been possible during the last nine months of crisis. So just to go quickly through that, GLSEN was founded in 1990 by a volunteer group of teachers, parents, and students who came together to change K-12 education in this country in the service of this vision. We envision a world in which every child learns to accept and respect all people, regardless of sexual orientation or gender identity expression. In 1990, when this group came together, as our founder Kevin Jennings used to say, schools did not want to talk about LGBT issues. And the LGBT community, for understandable reasons, was skittish about talking about youth issues in ways that we continue to have to grapple, for reasons we continue to have to grapple with today. We, did, we do a lot of different kinds of things, but underscoring everything that we did was a realization that we were tiny in comparison to the systems we hope to change. That still remains true, even at an organization of $6 million uh, operating budget with 34 local chapters across the country, we are tiny in relation to the systems that we seek to influence. So we realized early on that it was very, very important to engage with the broader education and youth development and youth service worlds on their terms and to come to the table with an understanding of how these issues play out on issues of common concern and what the solutions were that we hope to see implemented. Um, and over time, that's what we did. Uh, I joined GLSEN 10 years ago on its staff as Deputy Executive Director, and I had two tasks uh, when I started, given to me by Kevin. One was to create a research capacity within the organization. And two was to win the respect and trust of the education world. So uh, two things that were fundamentally linked. Um, so we created a research capacity within GLSEN with a focus on understanding how these issues play out in K-12 education and evaluating proposed interventions. Um, and we began conducting this research actually in 1999. We created a department in 2003. What we found was that we could actually identify very strongly four school-based interventions that made a concrete difference in the lives of young people. This emerges consistently from our research over the past 10 years and from related efforts. Having an enumerated anti-bullying policy, one that calls out bias-related categories and, and includes sexual orientation and gender identity has a concrete correlation with better outcomes for young people. Not just, and of course importantly, this is about their sense of inclusion in the school community, it's about their personal sense of well-being, the likelihood that they'll be depressed, but also with their grade point average, the likelihood that they'll skip school, and the kind of achievement gap and youth development concerns and future life concerns that are common to anyone who cares about schools and education. The presence of supportive faculty and school staff is critical. The presence of a Gay Straight Alliance also correlates with these better outcomes. Um, and inclusive curricular content. If you find the school has inclusive curricular content, the students there are much more likely to be having a good experience and to be doing well. In order to begin carrying this message in the education world and the youth development world, we entered into uh, partnerships beginning really 10 years ago with our joining the Committee for Education Funding, we had to be in the education and youth development world primarily carrying this message and making the case. We joined the Committee for Education Funding. Um, we are members of the Association for Supervision Curriculum Development Whole Child Initiative. We are part of the National Collaboration for Youth where I now serve on the steering committee that's led by uh, the CEO of the Girl Scouts. and. Most recently, we're invited to join the America's Promise Alliance, which was founded in the mid-1990s by General Colin Powell and is currently chaired by his wife, Alma Powell, and represents a very powerful public commitment 
to um, improving the lives of young people across a variety of sectors. Now, as a result of these relationships, we have a range of primary partners in our work on K-12 education and youth development from what I'll call in this room the outside world. And uh, these are partners where we have seen uh, them begin to truly integrate uh, understanding of LGBT youth development issues to the extent that anyone understands LGBT youth development. I would just like to point out there is still a huge research need there. And issues of safety, inclusion, and work to end discrimination and bias and violence directed at young people in their care who may be LGBT or questioning. Um, it has been a really dramatic um, transformation. We have also, um, one thing I'd just like to point out, we have come to a sort of an apogee of public attention on the issue of bullying. From 2000 to 2010, GLSEN strategic focus was very much about bullying and violence prevention and student safety based on some work we did with Celinda Lake and the innate understanding um, of, on messaging that's effective on these issues, but also because, of course, this is the issue where you can find the broadest range of common ground. Um, right now, we have a broader range of opportunities. We must cross the finish line in terms of safety, but there is much more to be done. And um, GLSEN's current strategic focus wants, is about ensuring that the whole school supports the whole child. We see four pillars, safety, respect, healthy development, and leadership opportunity must be available to every single child in the K through 12 environment. Uh, so we're working on that sort of next range of opportunities. I just quickly want to point out some ways that our, um, our national partnerships have had programmatic implications um, in, the, uh, in our work. A program like No Name Calling Week, an inclusive anti-bullying program uh, focused on grades K through 12, um, there's information in your binder about the coalition that has come together around it. In 2010, January of 2010, this program reached 100,000, at least 100,000 students. Um, thanks to the fact that it is a GLSEN program, but that it's carried forward by a very broad uh, coalition that stands behind it. And the National School Boards Association, we were very proud, they recently called it one of the, most, one of the best regarded and most widely implemented anti-bullying programs in the country. Um, and we had a partnership with Barnes & Noble this year where there was an in-store presence for the program in all 732 of their stores nationwide. On the legislative front, something like the Safe Schools Improvement Act could really change the game in terms of anti-bullying policy. We first worked on the Safe Schools Improvement Act, which would attach a requirement to federal funding that schools have an enumerated anti-bullying policy, first introduced in 2003 with Republican lead sponsorship, Dick Shimkus of Illinois. Uh, it now is about to be reintroduced on Monday or Tuesday with bipartisan co-sponsors in both the House and the Senate. Of course, there is also the Student Non-Discrimination Act. I'd also just point out that while we seek this change at the federal level with the biggest lever that we can possibly pull, um, we're seeing district level change already in places like Dallas, Texas, Oklahoma City, Jackson, Mississippi, three places that in the last year passed LGBT inclusive anti-bullying policies in their districts. So change is happening. Um, and finally, I just point to the Safe Space campaign. GLSEN launched a campaign in October to promote visible support for LGBT students in every single secondary school in this country, all 100,000 of them. Uh, we launched the campaign. It's a, it's a lofty goal, but we already have 10,000 kits in the field, and many of those have been placed in partnership with districts like LAUSD, but also uh, the Department of Education for the state of Maine, the state of Idaho, and the state of Hawaii have purchased kits to distribute themselves throughout their system. Um, so we are seeing movement on this to promote one of the most important things that young people need in schools, adults who care. This is a kit aimed at adults, allowing them to identify themselves as being available to young people, and it is an idea that has resonated powerfully in some places across the country you might not expect.